What's up guys, Static here, and if you guys are anything like me, when you first started to play around with potions, you were probably a little bit overwhelmed, and so I thought I'd just do a really quick video to explain the basics of the potion system as it is now. Now, the first step in creating potions is to create the bottles that the potions are held in. The bottles are created using three pieces of glass, arranged like you would arrange iron ingots to make a bucket, and that produces three glass bottles. Next, you'll want to fill the bottles with water. Now, you can either do this from pretty much any water source you can find. It doesn't deplete the water source at all. Or you can use a cauldron, which holds one bucket of water and will fill up three glass bottles. Now, these water bottles are your first stage of the potions. They can be drunk, but at the moment they don't have an effect. To start adding effects to your potions, you're going to want to add ingredients. Now, at the moment, there's nine ingredients for potion crafting. There's nether warts, which create the awkward potion, which has no effect. There's glowstone dust, which creates a thick potion, also no effect. Redstone dust, which creates the mundane potion, also no effect, but I'll get to those three later on. There's a fermented spider eye, which creates the potion of weakness, 1 minute and 30 seconds. There's a spider eye, which creates the potion of poison, 45 seconds. There's blaze powder, which creates the potion of strength, 3 minutes. There's magma cream, which creates the potion of fire resistance, 3 minutes. Sugar, which creates the potion of swiftness. And a gas tear, which creates the potion of healing. When adding ingredients into potions, you can make as many as three of the specific type of potion you're trying to make from one ingredient by placing three bottles down in the section below and one of the ingredient above. Now, unfortunately, the potion system isn't just as easy as adding one of these ingredients to a bottle of water to get your potion. In most cases, you're going to have to do something a little bit extra. So, because of this, I've divided up the ingredients into two distinct categories. Basically, we've got four base ingredients, which include nether wart, glowstone, redstone dust, and your fermented spider eyes. And then there's the defining ingredients, which include spider eyes, blaze powder, magma cream, sugar, and gas tears. The four base ingredients are ingredients that can be added into your potion without any prior steps, aside from filling up the bottle with water, of course. And also, three of the four of them have modifying effects later on in the potion creating process. The first base ingredient is nether wart, and we're going to be referring to this as the primer. The reason we're calling this the primer is that before adding in any defining ingredients, you must first add nether ward. The second base ingredient is glowstone dust, and this is referred to as the upgrader. The reason being is that although glowstone dust can be used to create the thick potion, no defining ingredients can be added to the thick potion to create a further potion. However, glowstone dust's main purpose in potion craft is to amplify the effects of other potions. So, for example, adding glowstone dust to this potion of healing here is going to make the second tier potion of healing. We'll be referring to the third base ingredient, redstone dust, as the lengthener. The reason being is that redstone dust's main purpose in potion craft is to increase the duration of effect over time potions. So, for example, adding redstone dust to the poison potion is going to increase the length of the poison damage. Glowstone dust and redstone dust as base ingredients are polar opposites in a way. What I mean by this is that adding glowstone dust to a potion that's been lengthened by redstone dust will often negate the extra time and boost the effect. And by the same token, adding redstone dust to a potion that has been upgraded will reduce the strength of the potion but increase the length. The final and perhaps most robust of the base ingredients is the fermented spider eye. I say the most robust because this is the ingredient that can be used in the most number of potions. You can almost always add a fermented spider eye to a potion and have some sort of an effect. We're going to be referring to the fermented spider eye as the defiler. The reason being is that the fermented spider eye's main effect is that it will either make a weakness potion, so a negative effect, or it will change a positive effect potion to a negative effect potion. So, for example, by adding a fermented spider eye to a potion of swiftness, you end up getting the opposite effect, which is the potion of slowness. Now, certain potions don't have an opposite effect programmed in just yet, as far as potions go, and so it will create either a potion of weakness or some other random potion. For example, defiling a potion of fire resistance will create a potion of slowness. At this stage, one additional potion can, can be crafted that you probably won't stumble upon by yourself, and that's by adding a fermented spider eye to a potion of poison, which will create a potion of harm. 
So to recap, as of the 1.9 pre-release, the stages of potion crafting are to make a glass bottle, fill the bottle with water, start with a nether wart base, add a defining ingredient to create a tier 1 potion, and add one of the other three base ingredients to create either a tier 2 potion or a defiled tier 1 potion. Anyway guys, I hope this video has been informative. If you still have any questions, let me know down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them. If you did enjoy this video and you did learn something, please do leave a like, it does help quite a bit. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time.